All right, good morning, Cadre. Um, coming at you today for a shave. It's been a while, for that I apologize. Um, just been super busy with some things, but it is Friday, October 19th. It's fall break, um, so not fighting in the bathroom for space. Um, wife is off today because she's a school teacher. Kids are off. Um, I got to work, but they're going up to the zoo with uh, her mom. So um, the weather has warmed up a little bit, which is nice. Um, not much. I mean, we're getting into the mid to upper 60s during the day, so it's it's okay. Um, we're now in fall. It feels like we feels like we jumped to winter for a little bit. We're now back down to earth and in fall. So um, I'm gonna do another shave. Um, unfortunately, my tobacco is gone, so tobacktober or tabak, however they say it, is over. Um, but what I'm going to use is a Razor Rock soap. This is from one of their most recent releases when he released new uh, soap scents. I really like this one. Um, I, I wasn't sure at first, but we have a local store um, that sells Razor Rock um, and called Mini Mustachery. And when I was in there, I was able to sniff some of them, and that's how I found out like uh, the Plague Doctor, which uh, KJ did not end up liking. That's how I knew I didn't like it either. But this one is called I believe it's pronounced Saturnia. And what it's supposed to be is it's supposed to be a scent that reminded um, Joe of time that he spent in Italy. And it's supposed to have Tuscan herbs and sulfur rich, sulfur rich mineral smells. Um, so when I first read that, I'll be honest, I'm like, sulfur? Wow. Soap? That doesn't sound good. Why do I want to soap? It smells like rotten eggs or something, right? Because if you've ever been to Yellowstone or been around any of those types of pots, we've got, you know, some... That's kind of what you think about. When I sniffed it in the store, I was like, oh, wow. That smells amazing. It's It reminds me of, like, when you would, you know, like, um, the best way I can describe it is, is if... I know most of you probably haven't been to Utah, but up in Park City, Heber City area, they have um, some natural springs. And you can go in and you can soak in them and you can do like scuba diving and stuff like that. And it kind of reminds me of that smell. Um, it's really nice. And the Tuscan herb portion of it really just bumps it up a notch. I really enjoy it. So the uh, shave brush today, as is tradition, Tomorrow is game day, so I'm using my Envy Shave Ute Brush. So let's go ahead and get to town here and build a ladder. This is the newer formula, so it has that argon oil in it. Um, it's a really nice soap, really nice scent, and as with most Razor Rocks, it is priced very well. So it's a good earthy smell. And I usually don't like earthy smells, but what's nice about this one is, is that it's not like that dirty, earthy smell, if that makes sense. Um, I like chiseled face soaps a lot, but I cannot stand Summer Storm, um, as an example. I do not like Texas on Fire from Sterling, as an example. Um, those are just some earthy smells that are just too much for me. It's, I can't, I can't do it. So. Um, let's see here. And what is interesting is, is, is there is a couple of extra things that's added into this. There is actually some sulfur minerals in it. Um, you can feel it. Like when you're kind of rubbing your hand over the puck and stuff like that. I've never really felt it when I'm building my ladder. But you kind of get that little bit of a grainy feel when you're rubbing your hand across the puck. But I do not get that. What I was afraid of, that Yellowstone sulfur smell. Those of you that have been to Yellowstone know what I'm talking about.
the razor today, I'm continuing with one that is probably quickly becoming one of my favorites in my den, and that is the Razor Rock SLOC, their double open, double headed open comb. Um, this razor is mild but efficient. It delivers excellent shaves, and I just absolutely love it. Um, it has a sharp Swiss blade in it. Is the brand is sharp. They're made in Switzerland. Uh, you don't see a lot of talk about them, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm really impressed. And I actually am running kind of low on my Astra SPs, so I need to buy blades here soon. And I probably will buy another hundred of the Astra SP. And I'm debating now on buying a hundred of these. I don't know if anybody else in the forum has used these blades before, but if you have, I'd be curious to hear what you guys say about them. Just a great soap. It's a date night tonight, too. Since so football season, the regular season in the state of Utah for high school is over. Um, because of fall break, all the games were on Wednesday and Thursday. That put the underclassmen games on Tuesday. So, had a good game. Um, it was a, on Wednesday. It was a bit of a rivalry game. The two schools are separated really close. What was really neat is, is that um, the school um, that I was at, in their backyard, so to speak, is Utah Hill Air Force Base. And because it was the last game of the year, they actually came in and they, they did a flyover before the game started, which was awesome. I mean, I've, I've witnessed flyovers before, and they're always fun. Don't get me wrong. They're always fun, and they're always adrenaline rushes. It's just neat to see that type of stuff. Don't ask me what type of planes they were, because I don't know. They looked like, I don't know. F-15s probably, I'm assuming. They were cool. Um, there was just two of them, um, but they came in really low over the field, like, I'm assuming, like, turn on the afterburners, or who knows, well, I don't know what you want to call it, and just kind of, it was like they were there. It's like they came in kind of slow, but fast, obviously, got to about the middle of the field, and then just poof, took off. It was really cool. And then, um, and what was neat is because they're so close to where they take off, the school is, um, before the game started, while we're talking to the coaches out on the field, talking to security, um, you know, go up and talk to the um, scorekeeper and the clock operator. Um, they were kind of flying around. And they were like doing tricks and stuff like that, you know, and just goofing off, I'm sure. I mean, I, I'm sure not goofing off, but to uh, a normal U.S. citizen who is not familiar with Air Force base life. Like, I've spent a lot of time on Army bases visiting family and stuff like that, but not familiar with the what they do, what, you know. To me, it's like, oh, they're just out there having fun goofing off. But sure, it was, it's more than that. But it was really cool. So, gonna rinse, be back for a pass two. So today we are uh, we're going downtown to eat, um, and then what we're either before or after, depending on you know, when I get home from work and how busy we are. I'm gonna hit up the mini mustachery down there because recently. Oh, about two months back, but I don't get downtown that often. They opened up a store location downtown, and so now you no longer have to drive from where I'm at at least an hour south. Now it's just 20 minutes, but it's downtown. So it's not like it's out of the way, but it is technically closer. So I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to snoop around and... Um, he sells Barrister Man products, and so I'm curious to see how the Hallows scent is and stuff like that. And 
you know, I just want to sniff around and get an idea on some other scents. And if he has a good deal on blades, I might, I might pick him up there from him. You know, I mean, I, I know. Granted, usually when you go into a store, you're going to pay a little bit more than when you do online, but his prices are usually pretty good. And I know when I last talked to him, I asked him, I said, "Hey, you need to get the fine EDTs in." And um, he said, "Oh, I." wasn't sure if there'd be a big enough interest, so he was going to ask customers as they were coming in if they'd be interested in it. And I haven't talked to him since, but I'm going to be curious to see if maybe they're there. And if they are, I might just have to pick one up. And talking about EDT real quick, if you guys... So on a couple of these scents that I've used that are real mellow, I've used some of the Sterling... EDTs. I've, I remember I bought three samples and then I bought um, two full size ones. Like, for instance, Sharp Dressed Man, which is after Green Irish Tweed. Um, the Creed Green Irish Tweed, which is, in my opinion, the best Creed scent. Now, I know everyone likes Aventus and I do too, don't get me wrong, but I really like the Green Irish Tweed. Anyways, um, guys, the longevity on those. Is fantastic. Um, he did a really good job in making these EDTs. And for a full bottle, which is 50 milliliters at 25 bucks, and then for every scent that he has, if because if you aren't sure how often you're going to wear it, like for instance, I got the Baker Street, you can get a five milliliter sample for five bucks. And I bought three of them. In different scents because I, I know I like the scents but I wasn't sure if it would be like an everyday type of a thing I pretty much have been wearing the executive man and or the barbershop almost every day um, I just I recommend them they're, they're great I mean you can get top-notch scents modeled after either your favorite sterling scent or the ones that he's creating that are made after something and you're going to have um, good longevity and you don't have to break the bank you could probably buy because he just released some new scents so maybe not quite but you could probably buy almost all of his clones, EDT, EDTs that he has and pay the same price as almost like one bottle of from Creed. Now, I'll be honest. One day, I will break down and I will buy the Creed. And I tell myself, it's like, I've spent that much money on all your gear a couple times over. It just, it feels different. Like, to throw down over 400 bucks almost on one item it's just a little bit different. I watched a video on a razor yesterday. I think it was called an RS. I think. And I was pretty interested. I was like, wow, that's a neat razor. You know, it looked real nice. It was stainless steel. The packaging was cool. I went and looked at the price. It's like, nah. Not worth it at that point. Pretty close. A couple of trouble areas. Um, clean them up real quick. So, um, but yeah, anyways, as I clean up here, guys, if you guys haven't joined us yet, hit us up at the Shaving Cadre. Right? Um, we're growing. We've had, I think we had like three members yesterday, um, which is awesome. I don't know if they've posted yet. But it's good to see that we're growing. I am stalking my Rudolph buddy. I have some ideas. But honestly, they, with, they might get all local stuff. Because I don't think... My buddy has used Beehive. 
And in my opinion, they should. So they might get some of that. We'll see. Good shave, really good shave. Nice and slick. I'm gonna rinse, uh, clean up my brush real quick. I'll probably put witch hazel on off camera and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the aftershave. Okay, back, did put witch hazel on, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to quickly talk about because it came from my Sterling mail call um, is I'm usually not a Bay Rum fan, but I started with this one because he sent it to me. Um, you include this free. Um, it's the Sterling Bay Rum deodorant. So this is my normal deodorant. Um, it's a natural deodorant from Arm & Hammer. Has no aluminum, no parabens, stuff like that. And I get excellent um, all day results from it. Um, using this which also is no aluminum, uh, all that stuff. It also claims no baking soda, but I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing or not. I didn't think baking soda was necessarily considered bad in deodorant. I have no problem with the Arm & Hammer brand. That's my normal brand. But anyways, I do try to usually stick away from the no aluminum in deodorants. Personal reasons. And this has actually done a really good job um, the only thing, my only complaint is, is that it does go on and it does get, leave that white, whereas the Arm & Hammer doesn't. So like, I kind of had to switch it up. Usually I put deodorant on before I put my shirt on. Um, I kind of have to do it reverse, so that way I don't get any of those white streaks on the outside of my shirt. But it's not staining the pit areas, it's not doing anything like that. Um, it provides all day protection. The scent is is there really strong in the beginning, but then it mellows out like after a little bit. Um, and you can easily smell it like if you lift up your arms to do something or something to that effect, you'll smell it. Um, and it's even doing really well during football, which in my opinion is the true test of that because how is it going to do when I'm out there running and being physical? It does a good job. Um, so it is a little pricey compared for deodorants. Um, but I think I'll probably occasion, you know, every now and then have one in my den. I have one more. Um, I'll use them both all up. Um, and I think I'll occasionally, you know, add one to an order here or there and use them. But I don't know if it's ever going to replace the Arm & Hammer for me. The Arm & Hammer is really good and it's inexpensive and I can usually get them on sale and I really like them. Um, but just wanted to throw that out there for people in case they were ever interested in these deodorants. In my opinion, it's better than Right Guard, Old Spice, all of those regular ones. Um, I would recommend the Arm & Hammer, but I would also recommend this if you wanted to try something and support an artisan. It's good. Anyways, going to wrap up with my aftershave, the Saturnia. Um, it does a good job with the same scent. It's really nice, and the reason why I picked it is because I felt like when it dried down and mellowed down, it would pair well with the barbershop. It's gonna be the EDT I wear today. Good stuff. So anyways guys, that's my shave. Hope you all enjoyed it. We'll catch you guys on the forums. Join us at www.theshavingcadre.com and we'll see you guys later. Have a good one guys.